Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Elite Dangerous Beginner's Guide from a Beginner with your host, Commander Great Taz, myself. And uh, today we're going to be going over detailed surface scanning scanners. And um, this is something we couldn't go over in the mining um, video that we did earlier. Item up in the right hand corner link up in the upper hand corner and link in the description uh, this was because the ports of call in the starter zone had any detailed surface scanner so after our last video on um, passenger missions and um, our mission to leave the start zone I did a little searching um, using Inara the website uh, and um, found that the other station, orbital station, in the system actually had detailed surface scanners. So, I went on over there, and that's where we're at today. Alright, so we're going to go ahead, right back into open play, as we've been doing currently. And we're going to wait for... There. Now, already we know pretty much most of everything. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write in the starport services. We're looking for a detailed surface scanner. Now a detailed surface scanner um, is basically a size one component. So we're going to go into outfitting and it's also an optional internal component. So we'll go down here and we got three open cargo slots. We're going to go ahead and brow. Well, we'll go ahead and sell that. I don't care. Um, not that we're going to need it. All right. And then you're going to, when you go in here, you're going to want to look for well, the bottom left hand of the major box is surface scanners. And this will bring you to your detailed surface scanner. Again, it is only one size. It's called a one eye. And it only has one job. So we're going to buy the surface scanner. All right. And what it's going to allow us to do is uh, scan rings and scan planets. Now, this system here don't have any... Um, ringed planets, but it does have planets as two of them. So here the system tells us we added a new component that requires a fire group. So we're going to go over to our fire groups. All right. And we're going to go down here. Uh, we're going to take the heat sink off of number two and we're going to put the detailed surface scanner on two. I like to have these on the same one just for the simple fact that I can do one. Uh, and then I'll have the other one ready if I'm just exploring. And it's, it's a good exploring thing too. Um, as you'll see in the uh, next episode, with, or um, in two episodes, next episode is going to be joining and leaving an alliance and some information on creating one. Um, and then uh, episode 16, this one being 14, is going to be about a lot of many extra things that I have found for Elite Dangerous that makes the game that much easier. All right. Um, there's all kinds of things. All right. So we're going to put the heat sink launcher on group B. We can always launch a heat sink anytime by hitting the V key. Um, that is the primary set key for keyboard and mouse. Now, if you've changed this, you'll have to remember what you set it to. Or you can go into your options and find out. All right. So we have our fire group set. All right. We don't have any missions. Uh, and, and what the information we're going to be getting, it's going to be sold in uh, uniform cartographies. But then again, it's going to be in the same system. So we're not going to be able to send sell any of it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and launch. Now, little things about the um, surface scanner. Uh, we'll get into in a moment. We're going to get outside the port here. Right, it's got that interesting, I don't know if that's a plant thing or what it is, but it's pretty interesting. And taking off. Type 9 Heavy is going to be in our way. And let's go ahead and just get on outside of this port of call of this station and now your subsurface scanner um, your detailed surface scanner uh, is an item that can only be used in um, 
super cruise, uh, or if you want to call it impulse speed, uh, this being thruster power. All right, so we got to get ahead and get into that. Um, not sure why I got a disruptive mass. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right in. Now, like I said in the last episode, that there's two planets here in the system that are interesting and probably might, if you have a scanner, take a look at. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go into the system map. Now, there is, you get different values depending on things. Like these Earth-like, these are high value planets to scan. So you want, if you see, and so are water worlds. So we've already scanned the system and we know them, they're here. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to target that planet. All right. And we're going to head towards it. Oh, we goofed up a little bit. We need to stop. All right. We are close enough already, but we're going to change our fire group quick. There we go. And then you click your fire group on which it is. And this is on fire group two. So we're going to click our right mouse button. It's going to bring you into this menu. Okay. Now, I just launched one. You want to make sure that you're not in combat mode, that you want to be in analysis mode. All right. And we launched a probe already at the planet. Now, as you see here, the probe is hit and it's, it's expanding out in a circle. Now, there's an efficiency bone. If you look around the screen here, you'll see that we've scanned 24% of the of the planet already. And you can see a front view on the on that that's on the lower left. The below, uh, dead middle in the lower portion tells you who mapped it, who was first mapped by, and then the bottom right it'll tell you if you're looking at the front side or the back side of the planet. All right, and for mouse and keyboard, that is your third mouse button, or usually your scroll wheel is also a mouse button. All right, all right. So above that, we have it shows number of three different boxes. That's the number of probes we can have. Uh, we have, and they will regenerate automatically. You do not have to buy these probes. Um, they're uh, not an item that takes up space. So you, you can you can have unlimited. You can sit there and fire unlimitedly but you can only fire three in a short period of time. Now on the left side of the screen, you see masses. Uh, the uh, tells you what the mass compared to Earth is. All right, and on the very bottom, you can see the exit view, which is your backspace for keyboard and mouse, your toggle panic slide, which I already talked about, which is mouse button three, and then your launch probe is, for me, is mouse button two, which happens to be my second fire group. All right, so you may have to set a little bit stuff up. So you may have to set up so that you can move around. Um, and you do want to be able to move around uh, without having to back out. All right, now as you see in the bottom right hand corner above below the probes, it says infinity, and then below it says there's an efficiency bonus. Um, if you hit, if you scan 80% of the planet, it will automatically give you the other 20%. And if you hit that 80% prior to having more probes hit on the planet than the target efficiency, um, you will get the bonus. So if I hit it with six probes, I will get an efficiency bonus. Now you can see here that this is the center. You can see the blue circle. That's like a planet size. Now you see this little white line here um, and two dot smaller um, lines on the edge of it that come out from the line that comes out from the center of the planet. Now, this is what they call the horizon line. As you can see, that's actually moving out because we're still technically moving closer to this planet. As you can see, the stars are moving. So we don't want to sit here and piddle paddle too long. So that is, will basically, if I fire a, um, a probe, that will make the probe hit somewhere on the horizon. It's not exactly perfect science, so you want to try to figure out a way to hit uh, your maximum number. And uh, I, I can also put that link into the description of a picture that I have found that shows a very good um, where to place them after basically 3.0. And it, it's basically off, it's also designed off if you have it engineered to its max capability. So we're gonna, I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one right about... Oh, 
get zoomed back. So 50%, that, that's right there. About halfway is here. We're going to back it off the planet a little bit. We're going to want it to hit on the back side. And then we're going to, as you see, where that one hit, it took up basically 50% of it's on the front side, 50% it's on the back side. So these other ones are going to hit a little bit further on the back side. So it's going to give us more of a, a scan area and not overlap as much. So my bad, it was not 80%, it was 90%. Um, so once you hit 90%, the planet's surface is scanned. And we got here, it was going to give us a system scan complete. That, that's a little goof. In, in the thing we got the efficiency bonus so we're going to backspace then we're going to go ahead and we're going to fly over to the other planet as the ship does whatever the heck it wants and we're going to scan it also now remember anytime you sell cartography it has to be 20 light years away from the location you receive the cartography so um we would have to find a system that's 20 plus light years away from zarelia and that's where we would sell it so uh, overall in turn you can make a lot of money as you notice when we did our 300 uh light year trip out and back we came out with six billion million credits now yeah early game that's a lot but if you think at end of game some of the ships cost more than that so you have to find a way a combination of multiple things to earn credits um, whether it's scanning planets and selling your cartography, um, exploring, which is fall, your planets fall under exploring uh, or mining, which this will also allow you to scan rings. We'll go over that in a moment. I got to find a system. Uh, we'll take a short break. I got to find a system to do that in and stuff like that. Uh, so as you can see, we're slowly getting closer to the planet. Now there, there is a sweet spot. Um, so you're far enough away. You're not being dragged highly towards the planet like we were the last one at Zarelia 5 um, but you you kind of have to find that sweet spot um, and you you want to learn that that spot um, and it's different for each planet based off mass usually large gas giants um, you'll get that you'll get that ring uh, uh, ring that goes around your orange ring here and that'll mostly that'll be about uh, two-thirds the way out from the center of the planet and that's usually your sweet spot but you'll want to be almost slowed down and stop at that point when you get there now you can't fire um your surface scanner and now you can't fire your surface scanner from a real long distance away you have a, have a certain range they have certain range and as you can see here we're getting close to, to Zarelia 4 if you watch the left side of the screen you'll see that subsurface scanner will change from red to blue and it'll say um It'll either say too fast, which means we're still going too fast, or it'll say, uh, you know, it'll be just blue. Uh, and so we're going to come in here and try to get close enough. There, so now you see it says too fast currently. That's because we're going too fast. We want to stop. Okay, we're going to pull away from the planet to get a little bit more stop on. Now, you don't have to be aiming at the planet when you hit, first hit your target. Uh, it's just generally the best, easiest way to work on it. Um, when you first get to your go into your DSS scanner and shoot your first probe so you can see we're pretty well decent away uh, we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna put a little over off the horizon and the further you're away the more of the actual planet you can actually see it makes it a little easier If you're too close then you're you're not gonna see as much of the planet as you would like um, like we're here so it's, it, it makes it a little more point where you got it a little harder to actually hit the target so there we're at 50, we're at 70, and there is 90. And we got another surface scan complete, and system, it's going to tell us system scan complete. Again, we really, the system scan is based off your uh, discovery scanner, not your uh, detailed surface scanner. So we're going to take off here um, for a moment, and then I'm going to find a system that has ring planet, that has rings in it. And then we'll go over there and we'll scan the rings and we'll show you how to do that real quick. A few moments later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, doing my quick research, I found a planet, uh, Gabel. Uh, it has ring planets in. As you can see here, um, it has four ring planets. I don't want to zoom in. 
uh, and a bunch of other planets. We're not going to worry about the other planets currently. Um, it has all kinds of heavy metal content. All right, got a couple Earth Lake, uh, Earth Lake World and two Water Worlds. Now these will be interesting to scan and sell the information to different planets, different system. That's 20 light years away. Uh, high metal. Got Clash Giant, Metal, 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 and uh, another Metal World. And down here we have an Icy Body, Icy Body, a Gas Giant that has two plant, two rooms. But we're going to look at this planet quick, real quick. Now, you come over here, we went over the, 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 the system uh, page before. Link up in the description. Uh... Uh, in an earlier episode now you can see here this planet has a rocky and icy this planet has metal rich and icy this planet has um, metal rich and icy and then this planet is also metal rich and icy depending on the type of your material you're chasing will depend on the type of material uh, type of ring you want most of the time uh, like the big paying things are uh, void opals and low temperature diamonds. They're in ICs. Uh, painite, which is another high pain mineral, um, it is a, a metal type. So metal wrench and rocky, I believe, are the ones you want for those. Um, there's a, there's a fourth kind. There's four kinds total. And I can't rocky, icy. Metal Rich, and I can't remember what the fourth one is right off the top of my head. So since we've already scan gone through this scan and plan system and scanned it, we can actually come into the system. We're not in the system yet. We're going to plot a route straight to that system. Now look at all the bases in this system that you can stop and get stuff. All right, but we're not worried about that. So we're going to get get up to speed, and then we're going to jump on over the Gay Bell. Uh, and call and go through that scan and in a moment we will be at the planet and glowing towards it and we'll show you basically how to do uh rings also all right here we go a few moments later all right as you can see here we're uh, slowly getting closer to gibel cd4 it now it has a ring on it we could probably go to cd gibel 5 um cd4 is actually closer <clears throat> I was just confused by the thing. And as you can see, I'm coming in here with the ring showing. All right. And I want to be able to see the rings on, like, not, like, the thickness of the rings. Um, I don't want to come at the planet uh, where they're thin, and I'm coming in on the edge. It makes it harder to scan the rings. Now, we're going to get here, and we're going to do like we did in the last place, and uh, get to a good speed, and then we're going to go ahead and click on this. Now you can see the two different rings here. You can see the icy ring and you can see the uh, the rocky ring. All right, and you can see underneath the middle circle, blue circle, that says the word ring. That means you're going to hit the ring. All right, and then you hit the metal ring. Now it's something we didn't go over before a little bit before, but there is a point when you will actually miss the planet completely, and that will just go beyond the planet. So you want to try to stay away from the mist. The mist is the very edge where it won't hit the planet. It'll almost all come all the way back over the planet um, on the very far side uh, and hit the far side of the horizon. So like if this is the near side of the horizon, it'll almost go all the way around and hit the far side. Or it won't have enough, the planet won't have enough gravity pull to pull it to actually bring it back around. But we're not worried about the planet. Currently, what we're going to do is actually wanting to scan the ring all right and how you scan the ring is no different than how you scan a planet you aim at it and see where it says ring now if it has two rings you want to slowly move away from the planet all right as we're trying here and that'll get you your inner ring and then you can move out and aim anywhere in the larger ring and just fire now you just wait for your probes to go ahead and hit all right there we go and you see we found a couple hot spots here this is a hot spot for something that's a hot spot and that's a hot spot and all right now we go ahead and back up out of here we look at our um targeting and we go over here i didn't want to do that we see we got cenobinodite monazite alexandrite and another cenobinodite and these are all hot spots for mining and then when you go in the we talked about this in the mining a little bit. You want to try to find hot spots uh, when you go do any type of mining because that means you're more likely to get what you're after in these 
hot spots. Now you can go just mine anywhere in a ring and you'll get whatever you get off a rock. <clears throat> that is what that is. Now we will go into more mining in the future because there's another module that you'll want to have on mining ships that will help you out greatly um, finding rocks that are generally crackable. Um, and you don't really need it. We have one, uh, I have an associate in the game that can actually go out. He forgot to put one on his ship. He rebuilt his ship, forgot one put on his ship, and he came back with a full haul. Anyways, he's gotten to the point where he knows the recognition of what the rock looks like to be able to mine it. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing in this system is just for the fun of it, uh, I'm going to uh, off off time. I'm going to scan these other three planets with rings on them. And then I'm going to move back up here and scan the Earth Lake and two water worlds. And then I'm going to turn that all in for some credits. And uh, it's going to be some more money in the pocket. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are back to another point where another video has come to an end. And I hope that you learned something from this one also. All right. If you did and liked it, please give the video a thumbs up. This helps out with other people finding the video easier um, and stuff like that. Now, also on the side point, if you don't think this video is any good, yeah, you know what to do. Um, because you probably, it's not that difficult. All right, on the last note before we get going, if you're not a subscriber, um, this content is continuing to grow. And I am going to continue to make it as long as people are continuing to. Please take a moment to subscribe, then click that notification bell from occasional to always to get instant notification of any new uploads that I have. With that all being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Commander Great Taz signing off and saying we will see you in the deep black.